Hey there, www.andrewmartmusic.com. Um, back in the, uh, the evil empire. So, nice day today. Uh, half decent summer throughout BC. Um, okay, so I want to talk. I want to talk about a very difficult subject here, called antinatalism. Uh, generally speaking the idea that humans should view this existence, this life, as something negative, as, as just not a good thing. Um, now this has to do with Christian Gnosticism. I'm a Christian Gnostic. Um, but I want to start out and be clear that I am not speaking here from a modernist secular view. Now, I was raised as a modernist and as a secularist. So I understand the views of sex from that perspective. Um, one of my earlier posts was sex, porn, and prostitution. And um, I'll link that so anybody can go back and, and see a more modernist, um, secularized view of this issue. But to be clear, this is not what I'm talking about in this video. This video, the context, is theism. I'm talking about antinatalism as it intersects with theism and especially Christian Gnosis. Now, the general idea is that this is an extraordinarily flawed creation. And it's extraordinarily flawed for a very specific reason when it comes to Christian Gnosis. And the reason it's flawed is because the god of the material world, known as the Demiurge, is extraordinarily flawed and came into existence by error. <clears throat> and it's for that reason the Christian, Gnos the Christian Gnostics held an antinatalist view. And I'm going to try and unpack that here um, to understand some of the points of why they believe this and why Christ wasn't Jewish. He wasn't a Jewish rabbi carpenter endorsing Judaism because Judaism holds the exact opposite view of antinatalism. Uh, they see the world as just this marvelous thing when Christian Gnostics just see it as an abortion. A shit show, a literal shit show. And that's where I'll start here. <coughs> From a theistic perspective, <clears throat> a God should be able to do better than, than creating the humongous piles of poop that this earth, you know, has as a foundation for its life forms. It's, it's like disgusting. Now, even the old Vedic... Uh, uh, gurus understood this they called it gross so it's the gross realm of the material world okay and that's as far as I'll go into you know the gross subtle uh, causal and non-dual I'm not interested in that topic right now I'm just making a point that it was understood even by the, the Vedic uh, gurus that this place was a shit show okay now my own belief uh, when it comes to the earliest Vedas, as they, they were Christian Gnostic for the most part. They understood what I'm saying. I'm not going to argue that point here. Um, but the Vedas were co-opted, basically co-opted by the capitalists and modernity and have flipped everything around to a view that, um, that supports, you know, Kabbalistic and Judean ideology or metaphysics. Okay, so... The, the whole thing is just a shit show, literally. And from a, a perspective of God, you know, any good God should have been able to, to do better. And I'm not going to get into who the good of God is and why it doesn't intervene here. The only thing I'll say on that issue is you need to think about, as a parent, that you have what we call today a psychopathic child. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, the 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 um, merits of psychopathy here. Uh, let's just say that for the sake of this example, you have a psychopathic child. A good parent doesn't murder the psychopathic child. A good parent puts boundaries and cares for this child. Okay, and that's basically the situation we're in here. 
this existence is quarantined, okay? There's some kind of void or chasm that separates what's called the pleroma from this demiurgic matrix. And um, they can't get out. Um, and there may be powers that be on the good side, the white hats, that are involved in this situation here. But the only thing I'll make a point about on that point is that the white hats are not here to endorse the beauty of this place. That That's a non-dual school, which I don't even consider gnosis. I consider that mysticism. And it may be true, but that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm arguing. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not a mystic, I'm a Gnostic. And the, you can't strip the foundational tenets of something uh, and misname it and, and, ex, and expect it to be accurate as a description, right? So, you know, if I make oatmeal and I take the oatmeal out, it's no longer oatmeal, okay? So this is dishonest. And this is what our friends are trying to do. They're trying to co-opt the narrative of what Gnosis is to protect Yahweh, you know, and the Torah. And what comes along with Yahweh and the Torah is uh, the economics of the Archons, of how they view Gentile people on this planet. It's nothing more than economic slaves. Um, okay, so that's a bit of a diversion. But, um, you know, if you think about sex and, and you think about it from this a higher theistic view of goodness, it's disgusting, okay? Like, no good God would make it so that, okay, this is, this is blatant, that, that a woman would have to, you know, have sex with a man orally with the same instrument that urinates, and vice versa, okay? It's disgusting, okay? And then, like, you can multiply that disgust uh, through anything to do with, you know, anal sex and, and not. Like, really, it's, from a, from a Christian Gnostic view, it's disgusting. You know, this whole place is disgusting from a Christian Gnostic view. Okay, now it doesn't mean there's never been a Christian Gnostic who argued for a maximally evil God. Never. That's a total misrepresentation of what Christian Gnosis is. This is saying that this is extraordinarily flawed design and that the God who, who's responsible for overseeing it, sort of like the landlord, uh, the, the archon, the architect, is not good. And it's lying to us on multiple levels and it's especially lying to us on the levels of metaphysics, especially as it has to do with the reincarnation template. But I don't want to go there in this video. I just want to stick to why Christian Gnosis Christian Gnostics held an antinatalist view. Um, and, you know, then there's the idea about um, bringing children into this world um, within the context of Christian Gnosis that they're coming in here to be prisoners. You know, like you really got to think about that. You know, like. You bring your child on into a planet that's a prison? Like, you know, give your head a shake. No seriously healthy person would do that if they knew the truth. Now, the problem, of course, here is that our friends for 3,300 years at least have done everything possible to invert the truth, you know, with songs like happy birthday, you know, celebrating your birth when you should be celebrating the death of you getting out of here. Um, uh, Valentine's Day, I'm sorry, it's a strictly Jewish uh, creation. Um, everything to do with Judaism is an upside down version of Christian Gnosis. So they celebrate men and women and love and, and romance. Now, how sincere they are, who knows? Who knows how sincere they are? It's probably just a way to make money, but we won't go there here. Um, but basically, the Archons, uh, the Jewish people and their religion, control the planet. And that's a major aspect of their work here, is this, is this um, controlling the narrative about love and sex and what it means. And uh, it's basically civilizational mind control.
you know um, anyway that I might do a part two on this uh, this is as far as I can go here um, without the traffic so yeah it's um it's just a situation where from from a view of a purely good God uh, that the Christian Gnosis believe exists um, this this place is just not good by any rational definition and um, yeah so that's that's just the beginning view of what of the why of antinatalism so anyway that's uh, Andrew Martin music uh, stay well bye